Say thanks for everybody showing up on behalf of the family. And, uh, Rick Chieftain is going to have the opening prayer here and we'll get started with it. love and life that he did these 95 years. We are indeed thankful that we had the time together and to spend and the love that we had for him and he had for all of us. <coughs> we ask at this time that the Spirit may be here with us with all of our family members and friends. We ask these things in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Now John Stevens is going to come up. He used to play in Brother Dick's band. I'll play some nice to meet you. It's an honor to be here with the uh, family this evening. God bless you. <laughs> uh, Dick Cheeseman, from the first time I met him many years ago, I surmised two things very quickly, and that is to know Dick Cheeseman is to know that he's got a guitar in a hand and he's got a song in his heart. <laughs> Amen to that. And uh, every time I saw him, that's where he was. A guitar in his hand and a song in his heart. And he loved music. He loved his family, his grandchildren, great-grandchildren, children. And he loved the road of life that he traveled. He knew the pitfalls, he knew the potholes, he knew the U-turns, he knew the road. 95 years young, and he was always filled with the Holy Spirit of music for the Lord. And I have sang this song in every county in the state of Kentucky. In fact, I'm the only living Kentuckian 
has been in every county in the state at least five times and filmed the history of all 120 counties. And you know something? I've seen some really interesting people in that travels. And Dick was unique and wonderful. And bless his heart and soul and bless his family. Tonight, on behalf of my wife, June Guyman Stevenson, and the Whosoever Will group, some of which are here tonight, that sang and played with Dick for many years. In fact, there's still two of us going to the homeless shelter in Fairhaven for 21 years every fourth Friday. So any of you ones out there in the old Whosoever Will group, Dell, Janie, whoever is out there, Flavy, I know you're there somewhere, sang with us, and uh, some have gone on to heaven, but those that are still alive, come on back down with us and join Randy Wallace and I at the Fairhaven Homeless Shelter, where we still bring music and a message of ministry to them. And in the honor of Dick tonight, and my brother Gerald Stevenson, who was in our group, and just loved Dick to pieces, and who's also suffering from Alzheimer's disease in the hospital at uh, Provident Pavilion right now, him and his wife Dorothy. I sing this song tonight for Dick and them. And it goes like this. Oh, the sun shines bright on my old Kentucky home. Tis summer, the children at play. The corn tops ripe and the meadows are in bloom and the birds make music of the day. Oh, the children rove on the little cabin floor, all merry, all happy and bright. By and by, hard times comes a knocking at the door. Then my old Kentucky home says good night. Now join in with me. I know we got some singers out there. We no more, my lady. Oh, we no more today. We will sing one song for my old Kentucky home. For my old Kentucky home. Far away. For my old Kentucky home far away. Praise the Lord. <coughs> Pass the emanation of God the principles. And just Amen. remember, watch over America and watch over Kentucky and watch over Dick Cheeseman and his family. Send them spirits on. Bring a smile to your face. Amen. 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 God bless you. Marcella being older, went on to live on her own. Imogene mean, then went to the Louisville School for the Blind. Lois was taken to her Uncle Albert and Aunt Edna Callan. Lane was taken in by his Uncle Jesse and Lucy Callan. <coughs> Dick was taken to the YMCA to live because no other family members could afford to take in another child. So, on his own at 14, life was very difficult. He started a delivery job for the Kentucky Post and Times 
uh, Kentucky Post and Times Star. And one memory he shared uh, about growing up at that time is remembering that uh, he would take folded newspapers and put them in the bottom of his shoes because of the holes in his shoes to keep his feet dry while he was delivering on the bicycle. And so it was around this time that he started saving money and bought his first guitar. And little did he know how that purchase would change the rest of his life. <coughs> and, uh, and he also, he, he taught himself to play the guitar. When World War II broke out, he wanted to join the service. And he applied for the Navy, but he couldn't join because of his poor eyesight. And after a while, he was hired on to Bart's Bottom Company. He uh, lost his position there when the serviceman came back to the door, but then he got it back later and he worked for 18 years for Bart. Dick will be the first to tell you that he was a wild and a hard living man at, uh, when he was younger. Uh, drinking and spending time in saloons and being a senior made for plenty of wrong choices. He liked a good time and he liked women. He played music for the Kenton County Ramblers playing in saloons throughout the Tri-State. He also went on WZIP radio station. And he and his friend Bob Bell went on the Don Boone show on television. One of his favorite memories was getting to go backstage and meet George Jones. And the first song that we're going to have in this live sketch is a nod to that part of his life. <laughs> Thank you. 
Amen. Some glad morning when this life is over. Wait a minute, this is what I like to know. <laughs> That's right. So later, uh, his first marriage, Rhoda Knott, uh, and had a daughter, Barbara, in 1948. He and Rhoda divorced soon after. He later married Imogene Morrow. That marriage produced two sons, Ricky Forrest and Ronnie Dale. After his job with Bart's ended, Dick and Jean bought a saloon in Latonia, which they called Cheeseman's Cafe. After their divorce, the bar was renamed Jean's Tavern. His next wife was, and last, was Virgie Liz Elizabeth Shepherd. Together they owned two stores and two saloons. Eventually they got Cheeseman's K and K. So there's so many, I'm sure all of just about most of all of us have, have shared a meal there and enjoyed her peach cobbler, meatloaf, and uh, mashed potatoes and Ricky can remember every time he went there that they'd send him home with one of those big cans of chocolate pudding. And uh, <laughs> so that, that's, that, that, that was a central part, part of uh, their life for quite a while. Um, Liz was the love of, her, of his life. They were married for 47 years before her death in 2019. She stood by him throughout everything in life. During the time before her death, he was always worried about wanting her to go before him because he was so worried about some of it that he didn't, he, he didn't think anybody would be there to take care of her and he wanted to make sure she was taken care of. And so after, uh, after she died, he was devastated. Um, during his time with Liz, grandchildren started coming. He had seven grandchildren and later 12 grandchildren and one great-grandchild. Liz had six grandchildren and 18 grandchildren, great-grandchildren. Dick enjoyed being a grandpa. Any one of them will talk about Dick singing to them. And of course, who can forget his Donald Duck voice? And so as part of the sketch, Kelly is going to give us a, some memories of grandpa. <coughs> if I can get through it. Yeah, that's what I forget, so. I even had on here about his Donald Duck, so <laughs> it didn't really matter if you were a newborn, if you were 40, or you were 60, he'd still talk to you in that voice. Um, there was times him and Ma Liz would come in to the bank where I worked, and of course Dick had to go up to all the women and talk to all the women, and even talk to them in Donald Duck. So every time Friday would come, well, the first of the month, they always ask me, is your grandpa coming? I said, well, yeah, he's got to come see you ladies. Um, but he was, he was friendly with everybody, as, as everybody knows that knows him. Um, and I read on Facebook when April put on there about how he was a character. And just as everybody that has been up here or have been talking about him, um, he was a character, not just a Donald Duck character, but um, he did love everybody and always tried to do for other people. Uh, he broke his hip one year at my sister's house for Christmas. And of course, my Liz was wanting to call an ambulance and he said, you're not calling one. And she goes, well, Dick, I need to call one. And he says, well, Liz, you gotta wait till these grandkids open these gifts, then I'll go. So, um, those are some funny things that I can remember. Um, Ricky may remember this, his moped. Oh, yeah. He would drive his moped from Latonia to KK Restaurant, behind Ma Liz driving a car. Of course, she was so worried about him and he had his old milk crate full of junk um, that he always had to take with him. So, um, so when we could stand here and tell stories and memories and times that we've all had, where he's made us laugh. Um, of course, there are some days that he was, you know, a pain in the butt, but we all still loved him and he loved us. 
So now he'll be with Mama Liz, <coughs> which is where he wants to be. And like April said, he always worried about her. Never wanted to leave her. And when she was dying, he stood by her all the time. He never left her side. There's not many men out there <laughs> that will do that nowadays. So that was definitely true love right there.
turned his life around and he turned to the Lord. He started attending what led us the first Evangelical Methodist Church here in Latonia. They enjoyed going and Dick started being the leading singer, singer at the pulpit instead of at the bar. And Dick was an incredible man. He never tried to hide who he was and how it affected who he became. He was a great example on making the best in life, no matter what was thrown at him. He was a turner and he, he started over in life many times and came up working and pulled himself up and, uh, and he did care about his family. Uh, Rick was just talking the other night about when he lost his job at Barks that first Christmas that all he got was, what was it you can, what, what was it you got? Paint by numbers. A little paint by number set because that was all they had. But he said the next year, when they had the bar and they were there, he said they got everything they could have wanted for Christmas that year, a bicycle, a um, jewelry watch, all kinds of things. And I mean, that's the kind of person he was. He gave what he, he always gave what he could. And uh, he loved his family and his church family. I, can, I, I, I knew a lot of you just because of the way that he talked about you. And anyone who knew him was better off for knowing him. And I could say that he was both a character and he had character. And as a final part of this, the uh, Melissa Graves and Ed Hiles and Marcia Stinker are going to be playing some music and uh, and, and give us a final musical medley. First off, I would like to uh, thank Rick and the Cheeseman family for inviting us to this uh, occasion. I've known Dick since 1976. I met him at Perk American Legion at the uh, for a benefit show. And it was for Chuck Swain. You might know him, I don't know. Well, Chuck and I became good friends. And a lot of people that uh, Dick introduced me have become good friends. I met a lot of people through Dick. And so later on, uh, one of my band members gave him the name the Mayor of Latonia because he knew everybody. And I never have run anybody that didn't know him. And I always said good things about him. So your family should be very proud of him. Very good man. And I know almost quite a few years back, Dick getting older, we all getting older. And he kind of got depressed. He said, All my friends is dying. And I said, well, yeah, I said, that's normal, you know. And I said, but look at this, Dick. I said, look at the friends that you're making. You'll always have friends. Your older friends is gone, but you're constantly making new ones. And he thought about it, and he said, yeah, you're right. So he wasn't depressed anymore. So well, I can help you out on that a little bit. <laughs> but uh, he got me going to the Perks Evangelical Methodist Church, and uh, there, uh, he and I and uh, Jane Stahl did a sing inspiration there for the last Sunday of the month. And uh, it became quite a success. We did that. And I met Jane through Dick, you know. So. But anyway, I just wanted to pass that along. I was kidding him. I said, Dick, you'll never die. He said, why is that? I said, heaven don't want you and hell's afraid to take over. <laughs> 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 and he says, I never did like you. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we got a song here called In the Garden that Wes uh, is going to play. Can we get an instrumental? Okay. <laughs>
another song that uh, Dick and I did together. He'd sing it and I'd do the chorus, and I'd do the chorus and he'd sing the verse or whatever. Is I saw the light. And Hank Williams song that he really liked. <coughs> Oh. 